Hello and uh, welcome back. Uh, today I wanted to take an opportunity um, to steal a case uh, from online and walk through a couple of potential uh, issues. So um, one of the things um, I think that we have to be careful of as digital dentists is uh, understanding how digital dentistry is obviously good for what we're doing, but also understand at times when digital dentistry can be not so good. And what I mean by not so good, it means more about the limitations that we may have with certain materials or certain components that we have. So specifically what I want to take a look at is the use of the tie base uh, that, that's used often with the CEREC system on narrow platform implants. So. Here's a wonderful case, unbelievably well done, uh, great implant placement, so many things are well done in this particular case. Uh, so this is not a, a conviction of this particular case, but more about just sharing with you what I've seen from my own experience and what we're looking for. So as a general blanket statement, and this doesn't always apply, uh, but generally speaking, I'm not a fan of using the Serona tie base on narrow platform implants and uh, let me show you why here specifically okay so what I'll do in um, red here is I'm going to outline the head of the implant just like so there's a head of our implant and then what I want us to take a look at in green is the width of our tie base shoulder itself. And we can see that that width is actually wider than the head of the implant. And that's not terribly unusual. What I'm more concerned about also here is the distance between the head of the implant and when it gets so wide. That's more right here, okay? So it's not that it necessarily gets wider, it's how soon it becomes wider. And this doesn't matter so much on posterior implants uh, or implants that are wider because then it's wide as the implant itself. But it really becomes an issue more along the lines of anterior implants. So again, what I'd like to draw out are a couple of issues here. What we know is we need uh, to maintain this interproximal bone, which I'll outline here in yellow, okay, because the bone sets the tone for the papilla, okay, and so we know that if we make the implant too close to the adjacent teeth, we risk losing this t uh, bone. Um, so that's why we want to have a one and a half millimeters of space between the implant and the tooth, one and a half to two millimeters of space. That's why we also want to have the three millimeters of space between implant and implant, so we can give plenty of room for that bone uh, to be maintained. Now, that same rule, in a, in a sense, also applies to the abutment itself. So in a situation where our abutment here, now we can see right here. So our bone still goes to right here. So this area, anything that invades that one and a half millimeter space here through up to this point can cause that bone to resorb. So in my opinion, this part of this abutment right here is invading that space. Okay, so what I would rather see us do in this situation is have a um, a custom abutment made, uh, or or modify uh, this abutment. And how I would look at modifying that would be what I would like to see in a case like this is really, as we can see, the outline of our abutment right here. I think in a better world, what I would like to see us do is have our abutment come out like that. Yeah. 
So I would rather see the purplish line as our abutment emergence versus the actual green. And what this would do is it would give us more volume for tissue and more volume to maintain the bone. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, sorry I was a little distracted by my phone call. Uh, so uh, thank you.